After working together in the critically acclaimed films The War at Home and Bobby, the father once again acts under his son's direction in the movie The Way. Entertainment is the family business, with the father appearing in iconic films like Apocalypse Now, The American President, and The Departed, as well as the Emmy Award-winning TV series The West Wing. Carving out his own niche, the son was an original member of the 80s group of actors known as the Brat Pack, as The Outsiders, St. Elmo's Fire, and The Breakfast Club, before evolving into a producer and director of his own projects, such as Men at Work, Rated X, and Culture Clash in America. Hello, I'm Ernie Manus. Coming up on interviews, our conversation with the dynamic father and son duo, Martin Sheen and Emilio Estevez. What was it like having the two of you work together? Well, for me, it's the best. You know, he's my favorite director. He's my oldest and dearest friend. And he's my son. So uh, he wrote this for me. And uh, the hardest part, if you don't mind my saying so publicly, uh, of the whole uh, time making this film was trying desperately not to, to um, uh, mess it to, up. To mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that was the. That was the, the. The. I mean, it was a great joy and a lot of fun, but there was. Uh, I had an anxiety. I wanted so hard to make it, you know, great for him, and that I was. Uh, uh, that, that 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 was a an energy that I uh, I experienced through the whole journey. Is please don't mess it up. Yeah, <laughs> to myself, you know, but it was one of the great adventures of my life. And I I told him recently we were watching. Uh, the end of the film in a theater over in uh, Mill Valley a few weeks ago when we started the tour and uh, uh, I, I was just so overwhelmed by the film and the emotional wallop it, it carries and the inspiration that it gives I just went over to him and I said hey man thank you if I never do another film I couldn't be happier with this one wow. this is the best thing I've ever done and, well, and, and you know my mother said while we were shooting she said you know your father I, I, is working so hard to that point he, he so badly doesn't want to mess this up and I, I haven't seen him study his lines work out like this or be this disciplined since he was a struggling actor in New York really yeah I didn't know she said that but that was <laughs> exactly what I was doing but it's interesting for you to say this is your favorite director yeah with all the directors you have worked with mm -hmm. I mean you must take that as great praise <sighs> Mm. Yeah. <laughs> do you believe it? Can a part of you believe it, or do you just think, that's my dad? Well, I have to say, um, for my part, uh, John Huston, the director, legendary director, was once asked who his favorite actor was. And he and said me? he said Martin Sheen, no. <laughs> he, said, he said that would be my father, Walter Huston. Mm -hmm. And the journalist said, well, why? And he said, because my father never tried to sell you anything. He showed up, and he was honest. And he did honest work, and I have to say that that uh, this guy's probably my favorite, not probably, is my favorite actor to work with. Is it hard um, to direct your own father? Though? Sure, sure, because it, it, there's that fine line between wanting, you know, not wanting to yell at him, right, <laughs> but uh, but also wanting to to make sure that he is that he is um, true to the character. And he has a tendency to want to be friendly with everyone. He's very gregarious, wants to jump into a crowd, wants to shake everybody's hand, wants to start speaking Spanish. <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, this is the, f we're shot the movie in sequence. So the advantage of that is that you know sort of where the character's going um, just by way of the road. And you can develop that character uh, in sequence as well. And he wanted to jump in and be the guy at the end of the movie. Yeah. So I had to keep reminding him, no, we'll get there, no. Not now. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's playing a curmudgeon. He's playing a guy who is cut off from the rest of the world. He's not a citizen of the world, but certainly he becomes so by the end of the film. So how do we keep him from uh, being his own worst enemy and developing that character too soon? He, he once said to me, or he'd say to me along the road every now and then, Stop! He, he said, <laughs> say, Stop. Wait a minute. Stop. He called me Ramon, you know, which is my real name. Uh, and he'd say, Remember, uh, this guy is so conservative, he would not have voted for Jed Bartlett. 
<laughs> and I would get the point. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because watching the film and watching a lot of your work, you play very controlled, closed characters at times. Mm -hmm. And you play them so believably that I think that's how you really are. And I saw you this morning, walk by, glad handing with everyone. And it takes a moment to realize those are just characters you play because you commit to them so well. Is that something that's within you that you have fought against, or is it just who you are naturally? Well, uh, I, every actor uh, keeps a storehouse of information, em emotional, uh, physical, spiritual information in our, our DNA. And when we get a job, it's like get, being given a license to go into that storehouse and begin to pick uh, uh, the various uh, uh, gifts there, you know, that need to be brought out and exposed. You can only do it with a license. You, you, if you do this in a bar, you get arrested. If you do it on the street, you're carted away. <laughs> but if you do it in front of the camera or on stage for the, with a specific purpose, then you are able to explore uh, what people will respond to as the human condition. It, it, it's never um, really very, f whatever character you're playing, no matter if, it, if, he's, if he's a good guy or a bad guy, uh, as long as he's human, an audience will respond to it. And as long as there is purpose in what you do, and it's not just, you know, uh, self-aggrandizement or self-pity, uh, then you, um, uh, you can develop a character with real uh, 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 you know, depth and breadth and emotional life. That belongs to you personally. It belongs to Martin, Ramon. But I can use it to explore the human condition f for a purpose and at the same time relieve some of that pain as you relive it. How does that process change, though, if you're doing a character in a film where you pretty much, I would assume, on day one of filming, you have to know who this character is. But then you go to something on West Wing where you're in it for many years. And I'm assuming along the line you find new colorings and all of that of a character. As an actor, what's more rewarding? And do I have the process even correct? You do, in fact, yeah. Uh, all actors work um, instinctively. Uh, so uh, like on the, the West Wing, uh, the good ones, OK. <laughs> But um, like on the West Wing, it was a long process that changed uh, as I never knew uh, a, a couple weeks out what was in store. You know, for example, when I read in the script that the president had MS, I thought they were clowning with me because that's my initials, Martin Sheen. And I thought, <laughs> what is that? And no, you have MS. I said, well, why didn't I have it, you know, a couple years ago? Well, it was dormant, you know, and yeah. you kept it hidden. So you had to be prepared for those kind. But that was fine. And 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 gave you a sense of staying on your toes the whole time. But that's Aaron Sorkin, too, one of the great writers working today, whom I adore. And uh, I would look forward to whatever he said. And if I was smart enough, I was let him guide me. I didn't try to change his words and, and, or his ideas. He was, you know, way ahead of me. And uh, that was a very great uh, experience. But going from job to job, you, you really have to be vulnerable enough to not make a decision in the beginning and say, oh, oh, this is the character and this is where it's going. You, you try to be honest about day one. But by day 40, <laughs> you may be in a totally different um, uh, character mood or experience. And you, you can't play day 40 at day one. That's what he constantly reined me in for. Don't give it away. Hold on to this. This is a process of change. So I was allowed, in a sense, to let a little bit out each day, each step of the journey to expose and explore. And by the end of the journey, I would have become a, a different part of myself, if you, if, you, if you could, you know, grasp that, yeah. is you don't let it all out at once. It's like letting all the air out of a balloon. It just flies off. But a little at a time, you can, you can navigate it, you know. Yeah. Well, you it was can always control reminding it. you that you had, you had somewhere to go. And, yeah. and, and, and preserve it, Yeah, right? Don't get there too early. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to trust it, you know. Uh, you know, our lives, or all of our lives are a, a pilgrimage. It's the physical pilgrimage, of course. We all have to carry what we've created, uh, and we all have to live with who we are. But the pilgrimage is to discover who we can become. Mm -hmm. So it's an effort to unite the will of the spirit to the work of the flesh. And you get that balanced, uh, you, can, you can come to know yourself and be free. You know. 
How much of the character, though, is written in any given thing? When you first get the script, if it's a film, or the first episode of a TV series, how much do you think the character is already influenced by the writer, and how much does the actor bring to it? How much is the director allowed to alter it? How do you guys make that all work? Well, for my part, as an actor, I'm always um, aware of the reality of filmmaking and t t television acting, and that is that uh, there's, a, there's a strength in typecasting. They'll cast close to you, you know. Uh, it's not an accident that I played Jed Bartlett, who was a progressive, very liberal Democrat. You know, that would have spoken a lot about my own politics. And uh, the only thing that I asked him to, uh, to uh, 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 consider as well was that he was a Catholic, because we only had one Catholic and president. And that he went to Notre Dame. And that he went to the University of Notre Dame. Uh, so, uh, because I wanted the president to, to make every decision in a moral frame of reference. And, and so Aaron agreed to that, and I was happy as Larry. But you, uh, you can't fault Hollywood or filmmaking for typecasting. You know, it, it, it's hard for a 350-pound uh, uh, actor to play a, a long-distance runner, you know. I mean, the audience, you, people don't say they heard a good movie. It's visual, you know, the, the, the hearing, the sound is the spirit, is the breath the natural breath, but uh, visual is what the film industry is really all about. So uh, uh, I've been cast very often close to uh, something I can reach, yeah. uh, outwardly, physically, and inwardly, emotionally and spiritually. I had heard that he had kept saying other actors should play the part, other actors should play the part, and you pretty and much said, were, we're, we're, we're not tell him why, though, because, you know, well, he, we, we, we couldn't get the finance. Well, we, we struggled uh, uh, trying to put this thing together. Um, and at one point, uh, he said to me, he says, listen, if you can't get it done with me, make an offer to one of these other guys, so Michael Douglas or whomever, right? There, there's, that, there's that short list of guys that, that help you get it made. And I said, no, I, I, if we don't do this together, I'm not doing it. Period. And at the first screening, he said to me, when Michael Douglas sees this film, he's going to fire his agent. <laughs> <laughs> Take me all the way back, and let's talk about the relationship, father and son. I mean, in the film, there's a lot of that there. And I'm wondering, how much does that mirror any of your relationships early on? There's a book coming out next uh, year that will explain it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're we're currently writing a book for Simon & Schuster uh, that will be out next Father's Day. And it's uh, tentatively titled Along the Way. And mm -hmm. uh, we're, in the, we're in the process of delivering the uh, manuscript now. Why do you think the time's right for that, that story to be told? Well, he's going to be 50 years old in uh, Thanks May. a lot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. And no, I will uh, next year. Yeah. AARP, here I come. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of milestones going on in, in our lives right now in the, in the family, and that's one of them. And uh, I had been considering for a while writing an autobiography. I just haven't gotten around to it, but this has inspired me, this, uh, uh, this uh, remembrance that we're doing together. And uh, I may very well uh, sit down to focus that discipline, which I've, I've thought about for years. I just never had enough time. It's like doing the Camino. I've never had enough time to do it. You know? When I was too young, I was too busy. Now that I'm older, I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm learning yeah. from the film, yeah. which is, you know, the, the movie really is about these lessons, right? Uh, and that's the first one that he gets. The relationship, though, between the two of you, and, and I bring it up because I think all the difficulties early on in your career, you're witness to all of that. Why would you still choose this career to put it? Because it felt natural. It felt like to, uh, you know, be on a film set, whether it's in front of the camera or behind it, seemed like an organic and natural extension of my childhood. Uh, there wasn't a year uh, that would pass that I wouldn't be pulled out of school and taken to some faraway location or loaded in the back of a, our country squire uh, station wagon and you know driving across the country whether it was Wyoming or Colorado or West Virginia we just we went there was no question uh, I think that's one of the great things and you know my parents are going to celebrate their 50th anniversary of being together uh, this year and and that I think is is the reason they're still together after 50 years is because well you know no one else would have him <laughs> Uh, except my mother, uh, no. But it, it, but is that we stayed together, and he insisted that the the family unit must stay together. Uh, where the you know whether it was driving across country or going to the Philippines, it was 
imperative that we all stay together as a unit. So for me to get into the business, it was like, okay, you know, this just seems like a, a natural progression of everything that I experienced growing up. But was there a healing that had to ever happen? Was there a point where you had to stand up and say, okay, I can forgive things from the past? Or am I looking at it too academically? I think probably looking at it too academically. I think that there is, just because of the general closeness of, of the family, there is, you know, you, you, they talk about European families, you know, how they get, oh, I hate you, I hate you too. Where are we having lunch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? And it's just kind of been like yeah, that. You know? Yeah. I, you know, forgiveness is such a very necessary uh, virtue that all of us have to uh, embrace. But sometimes we don't think of it overtly as forgiveness. It's like acceptance. That's a form of forgiveness, you know, accepting someone that you love with all their foibles and shortcomings and darkness and guilt and angers and judgments and resentments. All of those things are part of what's, what it is to be human. And I don't know of anyone that doesn't have some measure yeah. of uh, negativity in their character. But the idea of being human is to include all that because uh, we're all reflections of each other. We are the very best part and the very worst part of each other. We, the thing we dislike most about ourselves is what we dislike most in someone else. And it's usually someone we love. And that's really what the movie's about. That's it. I mean, it's right. about yeah. forgiveness and yeah. faith and yeah. family and community. Yeah. You know, Martin's character, Tom, in the film, he's essentially an orphan. He's lost his wife. He's lost his child. And he becomes a father to these three younger characters in the film that he never was able to be for his own son. Uh, and he, I think, becomes whole mm -hmm. throughout the, the course of the film by having this connection to these, to these people. Right. How does your relationship then with your religion help you through life and bring you to where you are today? And I, I ask that first because then I want to know, from your point of view, how you merge that into what happens in your mm -hmm. film, too. Mm -hmm. Well, my religion, there's no secret, I'm a Catholic. I, I love the faith. I have a difficulty with the church every now and then and, and uh, with very specific issues, but that's okay. It's run by men, you know, yeah. who are not uh, infallible, uh, who make mistakes. Uh, I could wish that the church would open up more to women and ordination uh, for women as well as, uh, you know, a choice for uh, uh, celibacy, all of those sort of things. But the central uh, energy of Catholicism is faith. And uh, that I love and embrace because it is universal. The word Catholic means universal. And I go to Mass here in Austin or New York or in Philippines or uh, in Afghanistan. It doesn't matter. It's the same sacrifice. It's the same celebration. And that nurtures me. And I love it. I love the sacraments. I'm nurtured by them. But the central uh, theme of Catholicism is peace and social justice. And so we are not just uh, called to be faithful to uh, a dogma or a belief system, but to live it in the community, to bring healing, to bring light, uh, to bring joy, to bring uh, ourselves uh, uh, to all things human and embrace them and to, uh, you know, uh, 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 to bring peace and social justice, to be active. And it's going to cost you something, you know. But you wandered of away from your faith, and then oh, I did come in my early years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why the lads are not uh, are, are Catholic. You know, they were, you know, were baptized Catholic. But I gave, you know, I gave more importance to my career and my ego in my twenties and thirties than I did to my faith. So I went off the, the rails a bit. Uh, but I came back. I came back to a totally different church. You know. I, uh, in my absence, uh, Vatican II happened, you know, <laughs> as I came back, whoa, what's going on here? I often say that Mother Teresa drove me back to Catholicism, but Daniel Berrigan keeps me there because <laughs> of the social justice and the peace issues that, that he uh, embodied. And, and uh, uh, my first arrest uh, for, for civil disobedience was with Dan Berrigan, so I owe him uh, a very great debt. So for the last 30 years, I've been a uh, practicing Catholic, and uh, someday I'll get it right. I practice long enough, uh, but um, they have been by far the most difficult years of my life because of the demands, and equally the happiest because they've made me free. I've become myself. You know, the journey is magnificent, and I couldn't be happier with what's gone on and what continues to happen, particularly the relationship I have with my children and and specifically this guy and the work I'm able to do as an actor, I found a way to unite the will of the spirit to the work of the flesh. We're back where we started. You know.
And how does his relationship with his religion affect or touch you? Well, I, 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 I am what my mother likes to say, sort of a work in progress <laughs> in terms of my faith, uh, which is probably like most of the population in, in America, yeah. um, in the world. Um, but I think that, um, you know, the, the difference between us is that in, in, in the context of making this film, he wanted to stop at every church and fall to his knees and weep. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, 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 and no, he, no, he no, says, no. Well, we'll stop at this church and we'll stop at that church and we'll stop. And I said, listen, man. We had to do with the ashes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought every time he, he distributed the ashes, there should be a ceremony or at least a personal uh, ceremony. No, that's no. not it. You want to stop. <laughs> we'll stop at this church. We'll, back to my story. Yeah. The, <laughs> truth. Right. Fantasy. Truth. <laughs> we'll stop at this church and, and I'll fall to my knees and I'll weep and, and, and then we'll go on and then I'll weep. And why do we need three other people on the road? It can just, it should just. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. I said, that's that's not a movie I know how to make. I said, first of all, it's indulgent, and <laughs> and it's 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 a it'll have a very limited audience. I said, L <laughs> audience of one. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I said, I think this movie is bigger than that. I think the movie is not about religion. I think the movie is about spirituality. And I, I said, you're not going to be able to point the camera in any direction in Spain, much less on, along the Camino, a Christian pilgrimage, without seeing some measure of iconography, whether it's a church or a road marker, it will be represented. The church will be represented. The, but, but I think, ultimately, the movie is about our spirituality and our reconnecting. And if we are told that we're so more connected now you know, by, by our devices, whether it's the smartphones or the computers or all of these gadgets that we have. I push back against that because I believe that we're more disconnected now, which is the great irony, than we've ever been. And I think, and, and my uh, uh, appeal to him was that this movie is about community, it's about connection. In addition to being about a road movie, but it's about reconnecting uh, on that level, on a human level, and less about religion. And I think over time, you kind of, you embrace that. Yeah, well, you know, uh, unfortunately today, uh, uh, religion tends to divide us because of dogma. I believe this, he believes that, you believe something else. So uh, we have a, a, an inclination to protect our own territory. But spirituality unites us. And it connects us basically to our humanity. I think the genius of God is to choose to dwell where we would least likely look that's deep within ourselves. And if we find that presence within ourselves, we cannot not find it in others. Do you find yourself then trying to encourage others to come over to your Catholic beliefs? Do you no, find yourself, no. isn't that part of what you should be doing if you so believe in the faith you believe in, to share that goodness with others around you? Uh, no. You've never not, evangelized? Not, I've never evangelized. I've never proselytized. I believe that by your fruits, they will know you. You know. Although he does happen to, on occasion, <laughs> corner people and talk scripture, and I'm and at, what, at parties I think he did only it to, if they're he did it to David, and I, and I saw <laughs> one of the first meetings he wanted to talk about scripture, several of the gospels. My and, interpretation. And the first hour, scripture. the first hour, you see people are feigning <laughs> interest. The second hour, <laughs> you watch their eyes start to glaze. No, no, no. And Martin will say, and Jesus said, mm -hmm. and and you can see them, you know, reaching for the, for the for the crudite, ah, ah, you know, wondering, wondering if the barbecue is ready. Yet. Is that food ready? Yet? Yet? <laughs> don't, I know not what he speaks. Okay, to toss into this mix too. Most people don't sit with their fathers and have their fathers say, when I was first arrested. So <laughs> you're known for your involvement in social issues too, and I think a lot of folks would feel. It's, it's an interesting combination of your strong religious beliefs and your liberal political beliefs. I don't see a separation of the two. I think you have to live out what you live in and that your life should be a reflection of who you uh, really are. You know, we're all uh, desperate to identify ourselves and that's part of the process of how we become ourselves. And so I'm on that journey, and I don't, I don't 
uh, I'm not able to separate my uh, uh, personal uh, life, my integrity, uh, my my uh, journey towards myself, an honest uh, journey uh, from social justice. You you have to be present to where you live and what you see and and what you feel. You you cannot keep stepping over bodies and and ignoring uh, why they're there and the condition they're in. You know you have to stop. You have to identify. You have to aid for yourself. You, you cannot become yourself without others. You need. The community. <laughs> so, what is next for your relationship? Where are you going next after this? Next well, up, Dallas. Yeah. Well, I don't we mean <laughs> I don't mean the tour actually. I'm literally on the tour. Uh, we're on we're on oh, the American pilgrimage. We're on American pilgrimage yeah. right yeah. now. We're in a It'll bus going across the country. It's very cozy. Well, it's great. I mean, it's it's a, it's lovely. Um, we look forward to more work from you both, independently and hopefully together. Thank you. And uh, a pleasure. Thank, Thank you very so much. much. Appreciate it. Thank Martin you very much. Emilio Estevez. Thank you.